can nature produce something even more terrifying than fiction? Tyrannosaurus Rex has been a cinematic icon of terror for millions, but might the real-life creature surpass InGen's creation? The T-Rex in the Jurassic franchise was largely accurate to the current understanding of the creature in the 1990s. However, 30 years of new discoveries and research have changed the story of the most powerful predator North America has ever seen. In this episode, we will highlight some of the differences between the Tyrannosaurus of Jurassic Park and of the Cretaceous to identify six ways the real Tyrant Lizard King was more dangerous than was conceived in the mind of Michael Crichton. And stick around for a surprise bonus segment where we shake up the formula on the film franchise. <laughs> Number 1. Agility Was Rexy, for example, more agile than the real T-Rex? Figuring out how dinosaurs could move has largely only been something testable in the last few decades, and the last few years have shown the assumption of Tyrannosaurus being speedy but slow to turn was dead wrong. In the Jurassic series, Tyrannosaurs are quick on their feet in thrilling scenes like the infamous car chase, but they are regularly outflanked. Raptors, humans, and even other giant carnivores have regularly been capable of getting around T-Rex, dodging their attacks, and in the latter case, toppling the tyrant reptiles. But contrary to the idea that big creatures are sluggish animals, the real tyrant reptiles were not reckless bruisers as once thought. Cutting-edge research such as a paper from 2019 found that the hip design in Tyrannosaurs especially were very well suited for quick turns and repositioning. Thanks to having evolved from small, nimble-footed predators having to navigate dense forests and uneven terrain, even the largest Tyrannosaurus would be extremely agile for an animal its size, scoring over twice as high as other big predators with even less mass to move around. Agility is not the same thing as running speed, and a fully grown T-Rex would be significantly slower than the car-chasing menace from the movies, but reality gives another workaround. Juvenile and sub-adult Rexes grew faster in height and length than they did in weight, spending over a decade as still large but extremely fast and agile pursuit predators that could keep pace with a racehorse. These growing tyrants could carve out niches all to themselves, pursuing quicker prey than their parents, and a huge human would be a near-ideal meal for a growing T-Rex. That part from the end of The Lost World? The baby might have been even more predatory at an opportunity like that. Coincidentally, this kind of behavior fits a portion from the Michael Crichton novel not adapted into the film. The novel featured two Tyrannosaurus, an adult and a juvenile. The adult, not for lack of trying, actually doesn't kill anyone in the whole book, whereas the juvenile T-Rex rips a man limb from limb. Number 2. Eyesight Exactly what is going on with the eyesight of the Tyrannosaurus in the Jurassic Park franchise has been debated for decades, often with contradictory information. Several scenes imply the InGen Rexes are capable of seeing stationary objects as food. Others show it cannot, or at the very least cannot without the help of other senses like smell. So, we are instead going to look at the original intention by the makers of the series. In both the original film and the original novel, the InGen Tyrannosaurus cannot see things that are not moving. In the movie, it is treated as an actual paleontological hypothesis, whereas the book implies it was a side effect of the frog DNA splicing. In the real world, however, this was never a seriously considered hypothesis, and the last decades have shown a wealth of information that Tyrannosaurus might well have had some of the best vision of any land animal to ever exist. Modern relatives like crocodiles and birds are sight-based predators, using focused fields of vision to both track prey and gauge their strikes. This means their eyes also have to be attuned to rapid movement and focusing. One adaptation that helps with this is both eyes accustomed to light sensitivity but also highly developed fovea, small depressions inside the back wall of the eye that sharpen focus. Most animals have it, but in birds and crocodilians, the fovea is very developed to both help them strike at a target in ambush from close distance and track the movement of a target.
target from afar. It's likely Tyrannosaurus had the same adaptation. A 2006 study followed up on in 2011 indicated Tyrannosaurus had a visual acuity comparable if not surpassing eagles, with a binocular range of depth perception over 55 degrees. This granted T-Rex the ability to both focus in on close-up objects and see nearly over three times further than a human can. While designing the Tyrannosaurus for the films, the eyes were kept partially facing forwards, but not to the same degree, and with the snout being broadened compared to the real-life animal. This might explain some of the problems with the vision, as it would give the in-gen animals less binocular vision and potentially a blind spot due to the thick snout. A real Tyrannosaurus could certainly see you when you were moving, and more likely than not would see you long before you saw them, morning, noon, or night. Number 3. Size Size does matter, and you would think that the filmmakers who created oversized Stegosaurus, Allosaurus, and Raptors for the film would have done the same with the T-Rex. Whilst the adult Tyrannosaurus in the films do vary in size, they generally are longer and taller than most recorded specimens, especially if we go off individuals like Big Edie and Rexy by the end of her tenure. However, if viewed from the front and checking the weight, one disparity becomes very obvious. InGen cooked up a bunch of lightweights. For the original film and all subsequent incarnations, the filmmakers modeled their T-Rexes after the most famous specimen at the American Natural History Museum. In the 1980s, this was the standard T-Rex for media and one of the largest well-studied specimens at the time. The first trilogy's T-Rex being about 37 to 40 feet long and 6 to 7 tons was very close to accurate for the time. Since then, however, more material and more studies of even larger specimens like Sue and Scotty have shown that an adult T-Rex had the potential to become substantially more massive. New techniques like volumetric modeling, which can more accurately account for mass of things like soft tissue, have demonstrated some of the larger known Tyrannosaurus had the potential to nearly double some of the initial weights given early on in the franchise. Even at the largest we saw her, Rexy, by the time of the final movie, was usually given a weight between 8 to 9 tons, several tons lighter than the larger estimates for the current bigger, well-studied specimens. And while the true maximum size for Tyrannosaurus is unknown, it is likely some lucky individuals got even larger. More mass would equate to superior durability and muscle force, meaning a real-life Tyrannosaurus would be substantially harder to topple or wrestle down in a confrontation against a rival of similar size, something the film Tyrannosaurs have a hard time with. Number 4. Silence Later in this video, you'll find out why this section is important. <laughs> The T-Rex in the film franchise do have one consistency. They are rarely quiet. This certainly makes for more dramatic cinema with the iconic footstep and thundering roar, but in terms of hunting and moving about with stealth, this causes huge problems. Tying in with the prior debate on the vision, it can be speculated that if in-gen T-Rexes have an easier time seeing a moving target, one reason they might roar constantly is to scare a stationary prey item into running so it can see them better, such as this infamous moment from the third movie. There are a few times the in-gen animals are able to sneak around, but many of these are when the Tyrannosaurus isn't actively hunting, such as the sequence from Dominion of Rexy searching out a dead deer, or in The Lost World when the Buck and Doe Tyrannosaurus snuck up on the hunter camp investigating the smell of their infant. In almost every other instance, however, they stopped to roar before charging, like here in the beginning of Fallen Kingdom. The real T-Rex was not only much more stealthy, but furthermore, this thing would be silent virtually all of the time. Large footprints likely belonging to Tyrannosaurus rex have been discovered and show the species had extensive soft tissue padding on the bottom of its feet, similar to animals such as elephants and tigers, both of which can be deceptively quiet even when not actively trying to be. The dense tissue would muffle the footsteps even over debris on the forest floor. Studies on the cochlea, a portion of the inner ear, also indicate Tyrannosaurus was very perceptive to low-frequency noises. Because large animals often produce low-frequency calls, it's likely Tyrannosaurus would be capable of vocalizing in a way a human couldn't even hear clearly, much like elephants. But this isn't to say it wasn't capable of roaring. 
Large birds and crocodilians are able to put out loud bellows and roars of their own, it's just that it would only do so when the situation called for it. If Hammond had stocked Isla Nublar with Sue, there wouldn't be any forewarning when she was coming. Number 5. Bite Effectiveness Official stats for the Jurassic Park franchise do list the near-legendary bite force Tyrannosaurus Rex had, but this comes off more as an attribute we are informed of rather than a feat shown on screen. Nearly every single time an adult Tyrannosaurus bites down on a large animal, even a throat bite, it is jostled off doesn't rend flesh or crush bone, and typically fails to do much damage. This does make for a more dynamic back-and-forth confrontation against other giant predators on screen, but something seems lacking. It just so happens a design choice for the Tyrannosaurus's film appearance might actually explain this. Dr. Robert Baker, one of the paleontologists who was consulted by ILM when designing the Tyrannosaurus for her big-screen debut, noted that the designers did make use of most references he and his colleagues provided to make the T-Rex for the film as accurate to understanding at the time as possible, with one big exception — the teeth. Tyrannosaurus has very distinctive teeth amongst its own family — serrated, slightly recurved, and thick as railroad spikes. These were optimally built for transferring immense bite forces into a target. Even if the Tyrannosaurus was forced to pull away, if it bit down on the limb or neck of a target, it would almost assuredly split bone and rend flesh before they could free themselves. Thinner teeth would not transfer these forces as efficiently, nor be able to secure as good of a hold. Not a problem for large carnosaurs like Giganotosaurus, which had a respectable bite force of their own, and teeth more optimized for shredding softer tissues. T-Rex is a different issue, though. But because thinner, more knife-like teeth were thought to look scarier on screen, that's exactly what the designers went with. And because Tyrannosaurus relied on securing a good hold to apply the full crushing force of its bite, this means even if the film Tyrannosaurus could bite down as hard as a real-life one of the same weight, it would have a much harder time hanging on and applying that force as effectively. Number 6. Temperament this might sound like a strange category, but consider what happens virtually every single time a Tyrannosaurus encounters another large dinosaur in the franchise. The Spino in JP3, the Indominus in Jurassic World, and the Giga in Dominion and Prologue. The moment the Tyrannosaurus encountered them, the Rex became aggressive and started a fight they lost. The only times a T-Rex has won a fight in the franchise against another big carnivore often involved lots of outside complicating factors, like the multi-dino melee and control chip situation in Camp Cretaceous, or the Therizinosaurus and chance luck snagging Rexy the win in Dominion. They certainly can win battles, but most of the time they rush in and it doesn't end well for them. This aggression towards other large animals also appears to be nearly exclusive to Tyrannosaurus. The Dino Tracker website and other media found around the time of Dominion even lists Tyrannosaurus as extremely aggressive, much more so than other large carnivores like Giganotosaurus. The moment they see a potential rival, they rush in and start attacking, managing to land a few hits before getting overpowered. The real Tyrannosaurus absolutely did fight other dinosaurs, including a menagerie of formidable herbivores and its own kind. The most notable set of evidence supporting this is the following. Healed wounds on the face and body of multiple Tyrannosaurus specimens show clear signs of battle scars earned fighting the most dangerous predator in their time. However, even if Tyrannosaurus was territorial towards outsiders, many of these wounds show signs of healing, a testament not only to the resilience of this apex predator, but also indicators that the fights were not necessarily reckless death brawls. The loser knew when to back off, and the winner knew not to be heedless. When you consider how many dangerous herbivores they would have to go up against the next time they got hungry and had to hunt, it makes sense to be careful and not rack up unnecessary wounds. With this kind of competition, by the time a Tyrannosaurus reached adulthood, they would have accumulated a wealth of experience telling them when to be careful and when to be aggressive. Fatalities certainly did happen from time to time, but this, coupled with Tyrannosaurus having intelligence at least on par with many modern predators, indicates they were capable of knowing when to pick their fights. 
Consider that a real-life Tyrannosaurus took at least two decades to reach adult sizes, whereas the in-gen versions had accelerated growth rates putting them at near adult size within a fraction of that time. Development and experience would be two completely different ballgames. Strategy, experience, and a moderated aggression are all things that nature's design cultivated better than in-gens. Bonus Section now that we've covered some of the differences, let's consider some of the major changes that would have happened in the film franchise if we replaced the cinematic incarnation with a real-life Tyrannosaurus. Because they are one of the best studied and complete specimens known, we will be using the Sioux specimen giving us a T-Rex who is roughly 40 feet long, 12.5 feet tall at the hips, and potentially breaking the scales at more than 10.5 tons. 1. The Car Chase one would think a slower Tyrannosaurus would make this seem safer. Unfortunately, not so much. With no booming footfalls to wake up Dr. Malcolm, he would have a much harder time noticing Sue returning and wouldn't be calling out to the others. The Tyrannosaurus, curious and hungry, would sneak back to the paddock area and have a nice meal. Dr. Malcolm is grabbed and pulverized by the time the car even gets started up. And if Sue is still hungry, Dr. Sattler and Muldoon might find themselves in a dire situation. 2. Raptor vs. Rex With better eyesight and agility, Sue would have noticed the other raptor in the room a lot quicker. The big one likely wouldn't get the chance to pounce upon the Tyrannosaur back as she is grabbed and instantly crushed in gory display. With the full force of the jaws smashing down onto her body, the raptor's internal and potentially externals pop like a balloon. This would probably be a good chance for the humans to run. 3. Spino vs. T-Rex Flashing forward to Jurassic Park 3, an accurate Tyrannosaurus would be a lot more cautious upon confronting an irate Spinosaurus. Interviews with the director of Camp Cretaceous note that the Spinosaurus has an extremely thick and resilient hide, possibly explaining why it's so easily shrugged off the bite from the Tyrannosaurus in the film. With the Spinosaurus up against a more experienced combatant, however, it quickly runs up against a wall. Sheer bulk. Even though the Spinosaurus is taller and longer, it is several tons lighter than the more stable and much more massive Sioux. A more careful combatant, the Tyrannosaurus baits an attack and counters with surprising agility, biting down on the arms or neck of the sail-backed bruiser. Stockier teeth work in tandem with a monstrous bite force. Even that hide can only blunt so much force, especially because the Tyrannosaurus would be much harder to throw off thanks to a massive weight advantage and a firmer hold. Bones fracture and blood vessels explode, and the Spinosaurus would be wise to retreat. 4. Main Street Fight when confronted with the Indominus Rex, one of two things might happen. The less likely but still possible outcome is that the hybrid attempts to communicate with the T-Rex like she had the raptors, given she does have some of the same genetic framework. However, with how aggressive and wounded the hybrid was at this point anyways, the fight would still happen but with a different aggressor. Being faster and taller, the Indominus would manage to land multiple claw wounds on the Tyrannosaurus, but the stocky frame and robust gastralia and ribcage blunt the damage. Countering, the T-Rex would employ their enhanced agility and greater mass to avoid getting toppled and throw their full weight into the hybrid. Considering the Indominus was knocked around repeatedly by a Rexy almost half this Tyrannosaurus's mass, the hybrid is not keeping their footing. Likely targeting the hybrid's weapons, Sue bites down hard on the first limb in grabbing range. With so much force and jaws that are not letting go, the arm is instantly shattered if not torn off. This fight won't end as quickly as it did in Jurassic World. 5. Fallen Kingdom Prologue Considering how much this unlucky individual didn't even notice Rexy sneaking up on him and he's now dealing with a Tyrannosaurus who's much quieter and can see much better even in the rain, his chances of making it off the island alive sunk before the marine reptile even got involved. Instead of stopping to roar and giving him a chance to run, the hungry Sue would already be bearing down on him like a silent stalker from a slasher movie. This unlucky bastard is very, very dead. 6. Giga vs. T-Rex Moving ahead to the final confrontations, the first interaction between the two we see on screen in the Biosyn Sanctuary might not even escalate to a full-on fight. 
Considering that the Giga was much less aggressive than the InGen T-Rex, the confrontation might change into just a brief struggle and the two mutually deciding to avoid each other. If the second battle at the courtyard does still happen, the odds might be quite different and the Giga would have a much messier battle on its hands. The Carnosaur would be longer and taller for better reach, but would have substantially less stability, uh, much less agility, and now the weight advantage would be reversed. Depending on which of the official stats are used, a large real-life Tyrannosaurus might be several tons heavier than the Biosyn Apex Predator. A brawl between the two that escalated would be an awesome sight to see, but one critical difference might swing the odds. In the battle against Rexy, the Giga often leveraged its greater weight and mass to swing her around once the Tyrannosaurus failed to grab on and counter. Against a much more stable, more agile, and much heavier Sue, this wouldn't work. If Sue got the same moment Rexy did when she managed to bite down on the Giga's face, the more robust teeth and stockier frame of the real Tyrannosaurus would have inflicted a messy wound and likely resulted in the Giga instead getting thrown around. The Carnosaur knows what's good for it. It will run. Fatal or not, the true king of the tyrant reptiles would reign over the valley.